To start with, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Ana Maria Naratanos. I know that's a princess name, it's quite long. I'm an anthropologist, a UX, I am a UX researcher and a service designer. Uh, if you don't know me, if we have met yet, please. Let's make, let's let's grab some beer. Let's have a coffee and talk a little bit more uh, more about life. Uh, if my English doesn't work, because sometimes let's be honest, it doesn't. Please help me. Send uh, Boros. Uh, Boro and I have a deal that if I forgot some word or if something doesn't really make sense, he will let me know. And if you are listening and thinks that something is awkward or I'm not, I completely lost my mind with uh, some meaning please write on the chat and let's try to make this uh, in, a, in an easy way because the, the theme is more important than in my English. So what we're going to talk today, we're gonna make a very short and very quick definition about ethics because it's a very long subject we can talk about for months and years. So we're gonna do a very short one. Let's talk, we're gonna talk about ethics and research ethics and design and what can you do about that and how it's the last part it's really a uh, uh, massa, a way to do this in your everyday life because we know that it's a very uh how can i say this it's very uh it's not very uh, real team not real okay edward you got it right so if you don't i can try again later so let's define this first as a researcher, as an anthropologist, I think is the first thing that we need to do all the time. Let's make a definition. Here we are using the Aristotelic, hopefully it's correct this word, uh, definition of ethics. And ethics in the end of the day is the way that is something that it's the branch of the philosophy that help us to, to make good decisions, right? So here is the full definition for you guys if you want to read. But the thing is, it's the way to make us to get to do to get the right decision to make the right decision through our societal so, uh, social reality. But it's quite important when we are talking about ethics to make this difference, and this is the only thing we're going to conclude the definitions with these two definitions here. When we are talking about ethics, a lot of times we see the definitions of moral using. Uh, uh, using so um, people using different definitions of the ethics, and most of the time they are trying to use the definition of moral. And it's important for us to know this difference because moral is something much more intimate. It's something much more about how people do this in their um, personal way. And ethics goes to the social part of these decisions. So here, just to use again another definition and help us to understand that, it's about the habits and customs of that society. Usually moral, moral it's much more connected with religion. It's much more connected with culture than ethics. Ethics, it's much more connected with uh, applicability and the laws and the, the rules of, uh, during that society. If you think, if it, it gets too hard for you to understand that, think about the word morality. Usually it's not a positive uh, word. It's a word that you, you use this word when things are in a bad way of to not allow someone to express or do things in a different way. But here, as this subject is quite big and we could speak for long hours about that, we're gonna learn through absence. So I'm gonna present to you three stories and three stories, they are old, they are in the far away past, but these uh, stories, I think would help us to understand how to bring this to research and design in our everyday life. So the first story is about the Dr. Mark I never said I never know how to say his surname, so I'm gonna say Hexted. I'm not sure if it's correct, but he was a Harvard researcher during the 50s. He was studying uh, actually food and how food can make our body healthier or not. The thing is, a few years ago, uh, Harvard School actually discovered that he received a large amount of money 
to lie about one of his researchers. Researcher, oh, oh yeah, you got it. So here we can see that uh, the, the, when Harvard uh, released this, this information and the, the amends that they were making at the time to prove that, but if you are older than, than 30 years old, you probably remember that for a long time, butter was the main villain in our food uh, because uh, butter was wrong, butter was that, butter was blah, 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 blah. And was based on this research, this research that has all this corruption helping here. And if you probably uh, remember, margin, oh, I hate that word, margin was the solution for butter. And we already know these days that margin is much more complicated for our health. It's much worse for our health than butter, but was based in one research during the 50s. Uh, this is a very important one. Here we have the, 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 the news, if you want to read more about that. But I'm not going to stop here. I'm going to tell you another story. And this is a much more complicated one that's about the Manhattan Project. Probably you have watched the film um, on the screens right now about Oppenheimer. And I watched the film. I have my opinion about the movie. But we're not talking about the movie itself. We're going to talk about something that's missing in the movie. That was the behavior about Oppenheimer after the atomic bomb. For him, and he defended that for a lot of a, a large amount of interviews, a, a lot of amount of publications, how the atomic bomb was a technical, pro, perfect technical project. Even though this is the full Manhattan Project uh, picture. Uh, we know that a lot of, of these scientists gave up during the, 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 the project. Uh, Oppenheimer suffered uh, a lot of pressure from his peers, but he didn't, he didn't want, he didn't listen. We can, uh, again, speculate here about this. But in the end, he was quite proud about this perfect project. Again, not a very ethical one. And the last but a very interesting project, a, a very interesting example about absence of ethics is one from the social sciences. So, so if you have have you read anything about anthropology before in your life, probably you have heard about Ruth Benedict. She is one of the greatest anthropologists from that time, the imperialist anthropology, and he. Uh, she was sponsored by the United Government uh, of United States to do um, a, 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 an anthropology study about uh, the Japanese uh, nation, not the nation, but the, 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 the Japanese people. Because, well, the, the government uh, was after this study was just after the um, Pearl Harbor uh, part of the war. And they were quite worried why Japanese people didn't want to stop the war, why they didn't uh, proclaim that they had lost. So they sponsored her with this huge uh, study about uh, the standards of the Japanese culture to discover how they would make them understand that they lost the war. Uh, Ruth Benedict really regretted after a few years, she tried to recover a few things, but in the end, that helped a lot and it's quite connected with the uh, atomic bomb. Uh, her project was quite connected with atomic bomb. Uh, and she, even though she was re she regretted this kind of things, is the same thing for us, right? When we think about this is, she didn't have or the, the ethics on this project was uh, taken account, right? So. Let's make a, 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 a sum up about here. So the first one is the anthropologist, right? I just said about her. So goodwill doesn't solve everything, right? Okay, what? Sorry. Okay, I Okay, fair enough. So just to recap, the anthropologist, she even though she has a very uh she was with the heart in the right place, doesn't really solve everything else. A good job, even doesn't matter what kind of job, can take to very bad consequences. 
when we think about the bomb, well, the bomb itself is already a huge consequence, but it's not because it was made correctly, technical correctly, doesn't mean that's ethical. And how is important to listen your peers, to listen your the group of people that you are working with. And the last part is the sugar. A bad research can affect for a product for a very long time, can biases. It's something that we need to fight and avoid all the time. And individual success usually means product failure. At the same time, you can think about, right? But that doesn't happen anymore, right? Well, I don't have the most recent uh, news about that, but I can bring this one. It's uh, eight years old news from Facebook. <clears throat> I don't know if you are, are aware of uh, awareness about this uh, news, if you have heard about that, but Facebook made a large group of people very sad for one month just using um, the relevance about the post, uh, the, the post is on the, the Facebook website to make how the impact they, they wanted in this uh, experiment to measure how, they, how, they, how powerful they are to make this everyone more sadness or more happy, how they could manipulate our uh, emotions on that. That was a quite a complicated uh, news at the time. I'm, I'm not, if you're not familiar, again, I have the news here. You can read about that. But TikTok was uh, yesterday, they, I, uh, I follow a few, a few uh, um, influencers on TikTok that they have the same uh, accusation that TikTok is trying to manipulate the emotions of their public. And so this is thing that's happening a lot yet. And we need, I think that's an ethical issue as above all. And how does ethics manifest itself in our everyday life? So first of all, it's of always, right? And our personal principles, career, codes, how, how we deal with this individually. Then we have laws, rules, and etiquettes. Et etiquettes as how we deal this, how we have these uh, regulations, even if it's writing or not, if it's said or not said, how this is, is a way of ethics to manif manifest it. And we have, of course, internal codes of ethics, mission values. Avenue code has a very strong one and is a way to make like everyday life more ethical. But I'm gonna bring you another example on that, right? Racism, corruption, tax irresponsibilities. So it's all kind of things that can be discussed through the ethical lenses. And if you're doing research as I am, and a lot of people in this on the design chapter is doing, it's quite important to think about how as a researcher, we are in a different position from our interviewer, right? Our research it. I'm not sure about this word, but I, I left here in a way. But in the end is when you are the researcher and you are talking with someone who is not prepared or already uh, have the knowledge about our, our research, we, we are in a power position in the end. So we do have our thoughts organized. We have a, 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 some questions we want to ask. We, want, we have a destination. We have something that we want to discover about the subject. And usually our user don't, right? It's a person that's living their life and it's having fun or not. And it's a quite complicated relationship because everything that we can discover during a research can impact the user life. So we need to be aware of this relation. This is asymmetrical relation when we are doing research and how this is an ethical issue for us and for the companies that we are working with. So moving on to the third part of this talk, we are talking about designing ethics, right? But designing here, it's about projection. It's about the project itself. So let's start with this fantastic picture. This was the celebration of George Orwell's birthday in London. Uh, I'm not, I don't know if you know, but in Lo London is the city that you can most mo can be most recorded around the, around the world. So uh, when we are talking about 
technology is technological, ethical, right? When we think about us in our everyday life, what we are doing is ethical or not. Digital products itself, right? We can have like so many examples about uh, ethical issues in this, in this world that we are living, this world that we are building. Because in the end, in their internet is considered by uh, social sciences and human sciences in general, the fourth revolution that humans have been through. So the first one is fire, the second one is, is agriculture, the third one is the press, the fourth one is internet. Internet is something really big, right? And we are still living this. I can talk about artificial intelligence here and other things that are happening right now, but we need to talk about thinking about this through this ethical lens. We need to take this back because sometimes I feel that we for, forget this in our everyday life. And I know right in the beginning of the internet, everyone was free and let's be honest, not all the time was good. I'm pretty sure that you have some examples. I do have a lot of examples of when internet wasn't a nice place to be. Uh, and we can think this, how we produce that. Right? I think this movie, it's quite famous. I'm not sure if everyone have watched this. I truly recommend and it talks about a lot about the design on this, uh, on this movie. Uh, but I think we need to bring this to our everyday life to do this in a more ethical and, pro uh, in more ethical and correct way. I'm going to show you some examples about when it's not done this in nowadays. And the first one, well, I was working at Nubank when we, this happened. So if you don't speak Portuguese, I tried to find this in English and I couldn't, but was a kind of um, scam to use the fake email about research to steal data from, out from Nubank users. Actually, it wasn't uh, a scam, actually was a huge problem that we had with our back office and everything went completely crazy was wasn't a, bad, a great time to be alive at the bank well it was great but was quite hard for us to 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 deal with this and the second one and this one i, I told boro earlier that i could be in the meeting right i could be the designer who decides to do a first use test with serasa users and Procon, Procon, if you're not from Brazil, Procon is this uh, institution that uh, trying to, to see if everyone is doing correct in the world of the consumer. Uh, Procon was actually moved, um, um, prosecute uh, Serasa because of, because of this, uh, this test and was an usability test. I talked with, I talked with the, the research at the time at Serasa, and it was really a chaos for them because, because in the end, this was the moment, right, that the uh, the oh, how, how, the stock, uh, yeah, the name's here and I forgot, but the stocks from Serasa got really, really low, and one of the, the, the reasons was this test. So it's quite simple, right? We did, oh, I want to see how people will use my 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 application and well something went completely wrong here and i know that's quite easy to get wrong so that's why i'm going to show you oh yeah that's we here if you that's another point that i would make connect or make a connection here it's how about the biggest data breaches and wrecks and the reason that's here and we are talking about ethics and design is about that these breaches is about like uh, back office data. However, if your computer was stolen and you lost all the videos from your tests and your interviews and things like that, this is the, the, the researcher, the designer responsibility in the end. And is connected with all this information, right? We need to be to be ethical. We need to follow a certain rules, and we need to think ahead about our, our user. So, I'm, I'm, I promise that I'm I'm going to conclude in three minutes, right? I'm, I, I promise that I'm going to be fast. But an ethical behavior significantly increase the cost of doing business. I like this sentence. I like this interview from Frank Sonnenberg because it's quite connected in there. If we don't behave well 
these kind of things can happen and can be bad for everyone, inclusive us. So I brought three, three examples. I like three things. I, three, I like three fold parts uh, to help you to be more ethical in your everyday life. First of all is a few things, a few questions that you can ask yourself to organize your thoughts. So for the user, Am I considering the well-being of these users, this autonomy and privacy and security, right? Is this person feeling comfortable with this research? That's the well-being. Is the person able to decide on the answer or even not to respond to my questions? Is the person protected even from evils uh, that they don't under, they do not understand from on their everyday life? Am I being ethical with the company that I'm work? is does this research violate my company's codes of ethics? Do I maintain the company's responsibility to the customers? Is this research with the company's values? It's, it's connected, it's quite correct with this. And the last but not less important, I'm calling here researcher, but is everyone who is doing research. I'm considering the integrity of this research. Is the research feeling comfortable with this research? Uh, does the researcher understand the responsibility for what they are collecting, how they are treating this data? Can this research deliver value while you're not corrupt, corrupting principles of the companies, the user and the researcher? The second things that I would like to bring is the anonymization of the data. And here I brought an example that I think that's quite good to see. So let's uh, let's think, for example, that you are doing research with this funny guy here, right? So we have the the marital status, we have the species, we have the professional, we have all the information. Is this really relevant to bring for everyday life? For a long time, for, for, for a huge amount of time, I remember to present my research results with all the pictures of my interviewers. And today I look at myself in the past and say, oh honey, what are you doing? This is completely insane. What we should bring to the to the, the answer for this research, right? We don't need to bring the name. We don't need to bring the email, just if it's completely necessary. We don't need to specify this person during this uh, the presentation of our results. And the last, and I'm saying this quite quickly to conclude our talk, it's the tarot cards of tech. I'm going to leave um, the link for you guys, but is in, in English, it doesn't uh, completely understand the uh, Brazil and other countries, Europe and Asia, but it's quite, it's a good start for you and your team to think about what you're producing, what you're building, where you are, what, where the place you are going. So I use this, uh, they have like these very beautiful cards and I have to use this to warm up for new uh, workshops and thinking about new products to check the during the process of the projects and even in heteros. So that's it that I have today. It's 1230. I didn't I didn't have time for sorry for the questions if you have questions and I'm gonna leave uh, this uh, the, the tarot cards for you and this fantastic video if you haven't watched it is the philosophy soccer it's the best of the best of humor, uh, English humor. I'm gonna leave the both here and it's with you, Boro.